Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and the Apple Watch has become a Swiss army knife of tools that is constantly accessible by the raise of your wrist. It helps you manage your notifications, track your activity, tells you to stand, can take an ECG on your wrist, can track your heart rate, and it can even save your life. And I guess it also tells time. There's just so many little useful things you can do on your Apple Watch at this point that if you own an iPhone and you don't have an Apple Watch yet in 2021, I think you're really missing out and you should consider buying one. Before we get into the video, I noticed that most of the people that watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So consider hitting that subscribe button for even more Apple Watch related content. And if you're a long time subscriber, show some support by hitting that like button. Now, my story with the Apple Watch is a long and complicated one. Okay, it's really not that long and actually it's not that complicated. Years ago, I was a really heavy set person. I bought an Apple Watch, the first generation, used it to track my activity and lost over 100 pounds, mostly just by filling my activity rings with simple exercises like walking or eventually when I started running. So obviously I'm a little biased here, but the first thing you need an Apple Watch for is to help you manage and track your activity. And really any Apple Watch model will do this, even the cheapest Apple Watch Series 3 or the really good valued Apple Watch SE. If you just want activity tracking for how many calories you burn throughout the day or how many steps you've taken, how many flights of stairs you've climbed, the watch is an effortless way to track how often you move throughout the day. The built-in workout app has tons of workouts that should cover every basic and even advanced user's needs. And I'm serious that you can start your own weight loss journey with just a dedicated 30 minute walk every day. That's how I lost a lot of that initial weight. Now to be completely transparent and let my guard down a bit, I have gained some weight since my peak weight loss, mostly due to the fact that I haven't been as active since not seeing people as often and not going out as much. But part of the reason I am making this video is to remind myself of how useful of a tool the Apple Watch really is. And I'm proud to say that I've hit my activity goal for a solid month straight now, making sure to take time out of the day to exercise. And not only have I lost some of the weight that I've gained back, but my overall mood and just my general alertness has improved drastically. So it's more than just looking good for the camera and God knows I need all the help I can get, but moving is in a lot of ways also helping me cope with anxiety and just my overall mental health. I feel a lot better for the day when I get my exercise in. As part of this rebound fitness journey, I've also been trying out one of Apple's new workout subscription services, Apple Fitness Plus. At first, I was hesitant to try this service out because the only thing I could compare it to in my mind was something like a Peloton bike. And for me, well, if you ride Peloton, I think you might be in a cult and you gotta get out of that. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I was just skeptical of the idea about virtual workout classes with over positive and constantly smiling trainers. But I gotta say, after trying it for a month, I think it's a great way to shake up boring workout routines. For me right now, I mostly stick with the cardio workout guides and mainly do treadmill or cycling workouts. The workouts can actually be pretty intense and have different lengths of time from a short 10 minute run or walk or bike ride to a full 45 minute session. During these sessions, the trainers give instructions like raising the incline on a treadmill or ramping up the speed or the resistance. There's also music that plays during the workout and each workout actually lets you know what type of music you'll be listening to so you can pick it to suit your taste as well as picking between a pretty diverse group of trainers with different methods and personalities. I'm a Scott and Sam man myself for the treadmill and you know for cycling I'm picking Greg because Greg's a name you can trust. You can just trust a guy named Greg. That's, that's what I've always been told. 
While working out, you'll also see your activity ring progress on the iPhone and other helpful information like your total calories burned and your heart rate. Now the classes aren't live, they're all video on demand, but they can be competitive with what Apple calls the burn bar. And that will actually let you see your, you know, progress during these workouts compared to other people doing the same workout. But if you don't have a competitive streak, you can actually turn that feature off. If you wanna see even more workout data from when I'm done doing an Apple Fitness Plus workout, sometimes I post them over on Twitter so you can follow me there. And hey, if you notice you're doing the same workout and you beat me, I guess you can tweet at me to make me feel embarrassed, if you want. You don't have to do that though. Now I know I'm not the most fit guy in the world, but I love the Apple Watch for kind of teaching me how to be a more fit person. And as much as I love the fitness features on the Apple Watch, that's not all it has to offer. The Apple Watch has been an invaluable tool for so many people helping them track their heart health. That's because every Apple Watch measures your heart rate constantly throughout the day and can alert users if their heart rate is abnormally high or low. This high and low heart rate notifications might be one of the biggest life-saving features about the Apple Watch. And you can just go and Google this feature and read tons and tons of stories of everyday people who were alerted that their heart rate was too high, then they took a trip to the doctor or emergency room, and that feature literally saved their lives. The Apple Watch can do even more than that though, with advanced readings as well. Right now, this feature is limited to the Series 4, Series 5, and Series 6 Apple Watch. The Apple Watch SE and Series 3 don't have the electrocardiogram feature, which will let you take the equivalent of a single pad ECG on your wrist. This can help users diagnose an irregular heartbeat known as atrial fibrillation. Again, another life-saving feature that maybe not necessarily everyone can take advantage of and hopefully you never need it. But for those of you who have an irregular heartbeat or just have a family with a history of heart-related issues, the ECG feature could be extremely useful. And if that sounds like you, I think it's well worth making sure you step up to the Series 6 to get a complete scope of your health. Another life-saving feature that you can get on the Apple Watch SE and up is called fall detection. Fall detection will actually alert emergency services if you experience a fall. This sounds like a simple feature and you may equate it to something like a life alert that's only useful for older users. However, fall detection might be the second biggest life-saving feature right behind heart rate notifications. And again, you can go Google and read stories of people riding their bikes, collapsing from sudden loss of blood pressure, and even alerting emergency services during things like a car accident. This fall detection feature has saved lives from people at the age of 26 and older. And if you own an Apple Watch with this feature, I implore you to turn it on. You never know if you'll be in an accident and it's just another feature that could potentially save your life. That's pretty awesome. Now, yes, there are some other health features that the Apple Watch has. Most notably, I think of the Series 6's blood oxygen sensor. However, I really haven't read any stories about this feature being a lifesaver, which means that there either isn't enough information or data out there right now about this feature. The Series 6 did launch in October, so it hasn't really been on the market all that long, or it just hasn't been as useful of a feature as the previous other health features I mentioned before. Now I know a large part of this video was spent on the health aspect of owning an Apple Watch, and that is by far, in my opinion, its most useful and important feature set. But the Apple Watch goes beyond health with little useful features that make it a device you'll want to use every day rather than a device you have to use every day. There's a lot the Apple Watch can do on its own now that lends to the versatility of this product. If you own a pair of AirPods or Bluetooth headphones, modern Apple Watches like the Apple Watch SE and Series 6 come with 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, meaning this device is the ultimate portable music player. And if you're using a streaming service like Apple Music, 
you basically have like the entire world's catalog of songs on your wrist. That's crazy. This also extends to other audio formats as well. So listening to podcasts with the built-in podcast app or even audiobooks is a great way to keep yourself entertained if you leave your phone behind, which I like to do, especially on outdoor runs. And when you're coming back from a run, you can even stop at a convenience store, and if you forgot your phone and your wallet, you can still pay for stuff with Apple Pay, which is always conveniently right at your wrist. Even if you always have your phone and wallet on you, Apple Pay on the watch is especially great right now when most of us are doing contactless payments and are trying to avoid unnecessary touching of unsanitized surfaces. If you have a cellular Apple Watch and a plan, it also means having a great backup device on you at all times that is capable of making calls, sending messages, and even getting directions. There's been a couple times where I've left my iPhone at home or had my battery die on me while I was out and having a cellular Apple Watch was just another lifeline in case I needed to call someone when I was locked out or if someone was trying to send me an urgent message and contact me. There's also the constant stream of notifications you can set up on your watch to make sure you never miss important news stories, phone calls, or messages. And if you're trying to snag a PlayStation 5, getting notifications on your wrist from Wario64 is the ultimate way to make sure that you're first in line. And it's also nice to manage notifications as well to see what's important and what needs to be acted on now and what you can save for later all by glancing down at your watch rather than pulling out your iPhone. And it doesn't stop there because the Apple Watch is always getting software updates that bring even more helpful features over to the watch. One of those features is actually the ability to unlock your iPhone with the watch, which is really beneficial when a lot of us are wearing face masks. Now, this is a feature found in the iOS 14.5 beta. This will let you unlock your iPhone using the Apple Watch, and basically any iPhone that has Face ID will first try to scan your face. If it notices you are wearing a mask, it will then see if you are wearing an Apple Watch. If you are, it will then unlock your iPhone. It's kind of like having another way to unlock your phone. Now, while this feature isn't out yet, and I understand most of you don't want to install a beta on your iPhone, and especially your Apple Watch, there's also a similar feature you can test out right now if you own a Mac, because the Apple Watch can already be set to unlock your Mac in the system preferences under security and privacy. This is a really handy tool, especially for users on older Macs or Mac desktops that don't have the built-in Touch ID sensor. Listen, I could go on and on about all the practical uses for an Apple Watch, from turning on and off smart home lights, controlling your Apple TV, calculating a tip on your wrist, checking the weather, scrolling through Twitter, setting an alarm or timer, or yes, it's a watch, so even checking the time. But that would require a substantially longer video. And Greg needs to get back to work so he can pay his bills. Actually, this is my job. Okay, I'm just lazy, but I think you get the point. The Apple Watch is an invaluable tool, not only for a whole onslaught of practical little use cases, but also for managing your health. And hey, it might even save your life. Which is why I think if you have an iPhone, you need an Apple Watch in 2021. And best of all, the lineup has never been more accessible. With the recent Apple Watch SE, which retails for below $300, and even if you're on a super strict budget, the Series 3 can be found on Amazon most of the time for just $169. So there's never been a better time to get an Apple Watch and jump into the Apple Watch world. All right, everyone, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including some future Apple Watch videos, make sure you're subscribed. And while you're doing that, don't forget to leave me a comment on what your favorite feature for the Apple Watch is. And do you agree with me that you need one in 2021? Also, if you don't have an Apple Watch yet and I persuaded you to buy one, consider buying one with my affiliate link below 
And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.